Hello everyone and welcome back to another contrast paint video and today we have for you the exceptionally large, by comparison to the other miniatures who are already a bit large, we have the Hulk from Crisis Protocol, the, the Marvel miniature game that we've already seen painting videos done on Red Skull and Spider-Man and Iron Man and a battle report by the time you see this. So in preparation for another battle report, the Hulk is going to be included. So we're going to do stylish, stylish, shyish. Is that what that says? Shyish? <laughs> shyish purple. I've been calling it shylish this whole time. Shyish purple. Pur bleh. Purple is a hard word to say with a Scottish accent. On his pants. It's a little bit darker than the like canonical colour, but it's the only option I have in contrast. And we're actually going to be doing that part first, just because it's the darker colour and it'll be easier to clean up for when we come to doing the skin. The skin choice was... Well, it was a toss up between Militarm Green which would have been more similar to the shade of green he is in like the, the Marvel movies where it's a little more subdued so it doesn't look as out of place or kind of like his comic book style which is much it's a much warmer brighter green and I'm going to go for the more comic book look since this is more based on the comic book style than than the, the cinematic universe style so we'll probably use warp lightning but maybe do a dry brushing of like um, moot green maybe over the top just to try and bring out the detail a little bit more and also add a bit more of a lightness to it. And then we'll have oh, Griffhound Orange on the brickwork on the base, Basilicum Grey on the rest of it, and Silver or, or Bronze just for the manhole cover once that's done. But to get started we're going to purple up those pants, hide Hulk's shame, and then go on from there. Also in advance apologies again for the lighting, it's winter, it's dank here. Oh and it's already based in Grace here. So we're just waiting for the slyish, no, shyish purple to dry now and I've touched up a little bit of where the, the purple bled onto the skin with grey sear so that's going to have to dry as well. Not much to see yet, the, the lighter highlighted parts will show up a little bit better once it's fully dried I think. But it's going to have to sit now until that is done and then we're going to do the biggest part of it which is the green skin over most of it although we'll try and avoid the hair because that will be black afterwards and the mouth of his teeth are showing aren't they? yeah the teeth are showing so that'll need to be going over with probably with gray sear and then agrax over the top to make them look a little bit less clean and at the same time as doing the skin uh, a, a red or a blue for the can on his base there I'm not sure about doing the orange at the same time because one of his legs is touching it so that might have to be a third step and as i feel as another sneeze brings since i still have the cold we will move on to the next part So a little bit of drying time later we have the uh, Warp Lightning green contrast applied and 
99% of the way towards drying. Just use some grease here to patch up the hair a little bit and also, as I said, just make the teeth look white-ish. It's, it's a bit of an off-white, like, what is it called, eggshell white? I, I don't remember. Either way, the uh, the grease here contrasts just to brighten the teeth a little bit and then there'll be some agrax or shade to make them look a little bit muckier because it, the Hulk does not strike me as the type to brush his teeth regularly. So. As far as contrast work on the green skin, that is all that's going to be done so far, and there is there's there's a highlighting, but I am going to try dry brushing Moot Green over it when we get to the very last step. For now, though, there is one more time lapse of contrast work to be done: the Black Templar contrast on his hair, and also the Griffhound orange on the brickwork. I'll try and do the Basilicum grey at the same time, but it might bleed in the little recesses down here, so I'm not sure about that. But both those parts do need to be done. Could do a, a gap in the time skip, I suppose. I might do that actually. So let's get on with that, and then it'll just be down to the finishing touches to see what we can do. So I've turned the camera a little bit to try and get some of the natural light shining in on this dank dreary day to show that the contrast work on the miniature is basically done now, although the basilicum grey still has a lot of drying to do. So now it's going to be the finishing touches, so some lead belcher silver on both ends of the can down here, some bronze on the sur grating with agrax or shade over the top, agrax is going to be on the teeth as well just to make them look a little bit dirtier, um, just normal bad and black around the base to make it darker and also a dry brushing of moot green over all of his green skin just to try and pick out some highlighting on the the brighter surfaces whether that will look any good or not you will all find out once we do a fade out and fade back in to the finished miniature and so sometime later we have the finished hulk miniature for you i think the dry brushing of moot green over the top of the warp lightning contrast, it worked, I feel. I also did a little dry brushing of, I think it's Demonite Hide, is that what it's called? Yeah, Demonite Hide over the top of the pants just to brighten them a little bit. It made a bit of a difference, I think. And it did all the, the agrax on the teeth and, and the can on the base. Uh, I'm risking going a little bit closer. Uh, no, the, the zoom is not, oh, it's okay. Yeah, that kind of worked. For the hashtag Ghetto360 spin, we need to start making that a thing in the comments for these videos. But here's your Ghetto 360 spin. I'm happy with how, how this came out. I think contrast lended itself well to all the muscle lines on him and whatnot. Maybe not as well if it was a character this large with armor. Uh, I, I really hope that Atomic Mass Games bring out a Hulkbuster armor model and it'll be basically this size as well. So it'll almost be like painting a Tau mech suit, I guess. But when you're doing muscly characters, the contrast just gets into all the right places. Don't take that out of context. So it turned out well. That is the Hulk done. He should be part of the next Crisis Protocol battle report. We'll see though. Still learning the ropes about how it works, etc. Um, if anything, the only downside about them staggering the releases like this is that there's not many miniatures to choose from yet. You basically, you've got the core set, you've got Modok, and you've got the Hulk. The next wave, which is the Black Panther models, the Asgardians, and Venom, they were meant to be out this year in December, but at least as far as the UK release, it's not till January, which is very unfortunate, because I've thoroughly enjoyed painting their miniatures. I've been working with the... I mean, I, I like Night Models' work, but the resin they use is not great. It was nice coming back to like decent quality plastic that wasn't Games Workshop, but I painted all the miniatures. I, I don't like Modoc, so that's why I don't have Modoc. In case you're curious, 
even though everyone likes screaming his name. Anyway, that's I'm, I'm blathering. I'm getting sidetracked. Thank you very much for watching this video. I apologize again for the, the winter lighting, but I don't want to wait until spring before I start doing more painting videos. Hopefully getting a new camera soon though, thanks to Black Friday. We'll see if it makes a difference to these. At the very least, I'm hoping it makes a difference to the quality of the battle report filming, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please do check out the other Marvel Crisis Protocol content or the other tabletop games we cover here. Thank you for watching. Stop for now.